In this video, I'm going to show you how I would approach a boudoir photo shoot. When shooting boudoir, I find the best approach is to keep it subtle and classy. Page 3 glamour has its place, but it's not here. There's an element of empowerment to boudoir photography, which is why more often than not it's the women, rather than the husbands or partners, who will willingly seek out and pay for this type of photo shoot. So how do we get this sense of empowerment across in the photos? Firstly, we talk to the subject, whether it's a partner, a friend, a model or a client, and find out the kind of looks and styles that appeal to her. We get an idea of what she wants to show or hide, what she considers her best assets, and what she's prepared to show or not. The best portrait photographers learn how to emphasise a person's most interesting or alluring assets and play down the unflattering parts. With boudoir, this is vital. The most common boudoir photo fail is unflattering light. We need to seek out and manipulate flattering light and learn how to avoid bad lighting. Window lighting is ideal. Soft, flattering and cheap to boot, it floods out shadows with beautiful light for an attractive, airy mood. We can control the spread and hardness of window light in two key ways. First, we can move our subject closer or further from the window. Closer in, the light is softer as the window is larger in relation to the body. Further away, the light becomes harder as the window is smaller in relation to the body and you can see the difference it makes to the shadows on the face here. We can also control the spread of light by using the curtains or blinds, so we can create a strip light effect. There are times when window light may not be enough, which is why I've also brought along a couple of LED lights. It's important to use an LED that's balanced with daylight so that it matches the windows. As for camera gear, I'm using a Canon 7D with a couple of lenses, a 100mm macro and a 17-55 f2.8 zoom. I've also brought along a monopod, which comes in handy if we need to drop the shutter speed, as it helps to prevent camera shake. A lens with stabilisation is very useful in this kind of situation, as it means you can get away with shutter speeds of 1 80th of a second, or sometimes even slower. The right focal length and lenses will help to give your shots the edge. A lens with a wide maximum aperture like this f2.8 brings two big benefits to a boudoir shoot. Number one, it'll let you shoot in the kind of dim conditions you get when shooting indoors with window light. Number two, the wide aperture will result in a lovely shallow depth of field with lots of beautiful blur. Just remember to focus precisely. Aside from the lighting, the other big pitfall is posing. We want poses that look natural while showing off the shape of the body. It's worth researching boudoir photos and lingerie poses so you can show these to your subject to help them form an attractive shape. And here are a few poses that you can try out if you like. For one of the classic boudoir shots, get your subject lying on the bed on their tummy. The angle is flattering on the face, it presents a good cleavage and it gives you the opportunity to either go in for a close-up or pull out for a full body shot. Ask them to cross their legs behind them and then shift the hips onto one side to create a great curve to the back and the behind. While they're on the bed you can also try several other poses from a similar angle. Ask her to roll onto her back or come up onto her elbows or you can shift the angles so that she's more straight on and that way you can focus on the face and let the rest of the body fall away to blur. We should always be looking for ways to create interesting shapes out of the body to show the curves and the rise and fall. A pose like this gives you separation between the subject and the chair. Here the camera is almost on the floor to make her seem more dominant and statuesque in the frame. Compare it to one where she's simply lying down and you can see her shape becomes a little lost. No matter the size or shape of your subject, the curves of the behind can create a beautiful shape when backlit. This one is all about the lighting. We position a light, this could either be window light, an LED or flash, behind the subject, angled back towards the camera to backlight the body, emphasising the shape, and then we shoot from a low angle. Backlighting is often used to great effect in boudoir photography. For this we shoot with the window or light source behind the subject. Here we've got a two LED light setup. 
The first is positioned behind the subject to the right. The second, a ring LED, is placed in front of the camera. This combination of cross-lighting from either side creates a stylish backlit look that shows off the curves of the body. LEDs can also be useful if you want to reduce harder lighting and stronger shadows. Here, strong side lighting from the left of camera creates a more edgy fashion type shot. Ask her to close her eyes or angle them downwards as if she's sleeping and it'll lend the photo a calming mood. Sometimes eye contact can be a bit too direct. Getting her to look down or away from the camera creates more of a thoughtful mood as if she's unaware. It can be nice to introduce a gentle narrative to the photo by using props, so use whatever's to hand. Even something as simple as a cup of tea transforms the mood of the image. It's no longer just a person looking out of a window, it's a more thoughtful and comforting moment. It also creates more of a voyeuristic feel as if they've been caught during a private moment. If you want to tell a story with your portraits then try including detail shots or cropping into different parts of the body. Shots like this can work particularly well as part of an album or a compilation of images. Here strong backlighting creates a nice shape with the shadows and the legs. So there we have it, that's a few boudoir techniques to try out and remember it's all about the lighting.